Hey guys, we are Sean and Christy. This is Long Long Honeymoon, and yes, it appears our beloved Airstream travel trailer has been struck by lightning. Q intro. Bum, bum, bum. <laughs> We are camping in one of the most interesting sites we've ever had in Long Long Honeymoon history in one of the most beautiful motorsports race courses. And it happens to be a short drive from our house. <laughs> <laughs> If you've watched our videos in the past, you know we always recommend that you do a shakedown cruise pretty close to where you live because you never know if something really bad has happened and you need to go back home and get parts or tools or you might just need to abandon your trip altogether. So it's really fortuitous that we chose this destination as our shakedown cruise because all those things happen. Ready? First of all, we tow our RV over to Barber Motorsports Park. And it's a great place to camp, mostly. <laughs> so as part of our shakedown cruise, we need to empty our gray and black water tanks. Unfortunately, Barber Motorsports Park does not have an RV dump station. We found one at a truck stop. There are no hookups here at Barber Motorsports Park. So if you bring your RV here, you will be essentially boondocking, although you're paying for that privilege to boondock. The closest dump station is about five miles away. It's in truck stop and it's one of the most poorly designed dump stations in North America. It was pretty bad. We had a lot of fun trying to push poop water uphill at the dump station and then towed from one of the worst dump stations in America to one of the prettiest race courses in America. Yes. This is where Porsche Cars North America has the official Porsche track experience, and you can come receive instruction in driving Porsches from some of the best drivers in the world, like Le Mans winning drivers. Mm -hmm. We set up camp, and I have to say, this time of year in Alabama, it's starting to get hot. For most of you in most of North America, this would be a massive heat wave. Yeah, I mean the highs are 85 or so. But it's 85 with some hints nice of, humidity. <laughs> the air is thick as pea soup. It's not that bad yet. But you're right on the edge of getting by through the night without air conditioning. And during the day, you really need air conditioning to be comfortable. Sorry, it's yeah. just a fact. So our first night here, everything seemed to be kind of okay. We slept through the night. Using and our fans. Using our fans to, open. to cool the trailer. I have to say, one of the things that's really fascinating about camping at Barber Motorsports Park is waking up at the racetrack. <laughs> because you're at the racetrack before anybody, and so everything's quiet around here, and you can really appreciate the park aspect of this place. Because what makes Barber unique, it is a uniquely beautiful place. Uh, it's greenery everywhere you look. There are waterfalls, there are art displays. Before 8 a.m., the birds are singing, and it's just so pleasant here. Super quiet, which is unusual for a racetrack. Basically, the, the track is empty, it's quiet. That's a really unique experience, and that's something I love about having an RV, is being able to wake up in these unique environments like Barber. Okay, so this morning, I woke up, the sun was coming up, and I'm thinking, oh, I'm gonna see how much solar we're getting from the sun. Because of course, you know we have a really nice solar package installed on our Airstream now, and I was looking forward to tapping into the sun. Mother Nature. To deliver us electricity so we could run our air conditioning in the afternoon. Well, we're getting zero solar, nothing. So our solar panels were not registering at all on our control panel inside the trailer. We're getting zero from the solar panels. It's like they don't even exist according to our Victron color display. See, for some reason that is not connected. No worries, right? We've got a trusty generator. And I will say that generator is the one thing I know is gonna crank. I'm gonna knock on some wood. Yeah, I know, you better find something that, Our generator has been ultra reliable. So I go to crank the generator, and yes, after a couple of tries, it cranks. Everything's hunky-dory, except our RV is not receiving any power from the generator. And after looking at the situation, we began to realize that our surge protector 
in our trailer may be fried. So this ties back into the lightning strike that happened a few weeks ago. Where we store our, our Airstream, the receptacle that our Airstream was plugged into was struck by lightning. And so it knocked the power out of our Airstream for a couple of days because that power cord was dead that we were plugged into but we got a new cord run we plugged into that and really everything seemed to be fine we were getting solar we were still getting shore power everything seemed to be normal so we thought well the surge protector did its job and then we show up and suddenly we can't get any power inside our rv so we're thinking our batteries are going to drain down to nothing yeah and you know what happens in an rv when your batteries die not only do you lose all your lights, you lose your water pump. You can't flush turn on a faucet. Toilet. You can't flush your toilet. Your refrigerator dies because it can't power the fan to cool your refrigerator. So everything in your fridge is gonna go bad. So this is why shakedown crews close to home is a good idea because worst case scenario, I could throw everything in a bag and drive home and put it back in our fridge. Charge, you're not gonna get any solar in. Uh, in other words, the watts won't show up on the display if they're not going into the battery. So we got on the phone with Ronnie Dennis, Airstream Nuts and Bolts, who installed our solar package, and we kind of went through a process of elimination to try and figure out what had gone wrong. You know, we isolated the surge protector as the problem area and figured it must have just died on us, and suddenly it started working again. Like, suddenly we were able to get shore power from our generator but and still no solar coming in. Yeah, the solar is so still it's not disappeared. Even registering. So the bottom line is, we think that lightning has damaged our surge protector. Like maybe there's a short somewhere, or there's some sort of contact that isn't making contact anymore. Whatever happened in transit from you know picking it up a few days ago to bringing it here, obviously has thrown things off. Honestly, I've been a little bit on the fence about RV surge protectors and you know whether it makes sense to have one or not have really one. Do you one? really need one? In this case, if it is our surge protector and if if it did act as kind of our last line of defense, then it may have saved us thousands of dollars of damage. <laughs> Absolutely. I mean, because, you know, we now have those really nice battleborne lithium ion batteries in there. Mm -hmm. We got the whole Victron 3000 watt inverter set up, not to mention our RV appliances. And this really could have devastated all of those because we do know of other gear in the area of this lightning strike that was destroyed, mm -hmm. like telephones and TV Some sets. Television sets. Tip of my hat to the surge protector because apparently it has done its job. Once it started working again, <laughs> things settled down here and we had a really enjoyable weekend at Barber Motorsports Park. Yeah. This is the historics weekend, so there are a lot of historic racing cars here. Historic cars are what I really enjoy Yeah, they're watching. a lot of fun because they're just sort of from all different genres, time frames. There's a lot of variety. This year we brought our new electric bikes. We have a couple of electric XP 2.0 bikes mm -hmm. that we're testing and breaking in right now. We will be doing a full review of these bikes soon, but having an electric bike at Barber Motorsports Park is just the way to go. Yeah, it really makes it just more accessible. You don't have to rely on the tram system. You can sort of be your own boss as far as where you go and how you get there and how quickly you get there and how comfortably you get there. If you've never ridden an electric bike before, these bikes are equipped with with lithium ion batteries and electric motors. So they give you a little boost. Pedal assist is what they like to call it. So while you're pedaling, the little motor gives you a little push. So when you're pedaling uphill, it's like somebody behind you just giving you a little push. So you're not having to work quite as hard. You do still have to pedal, but you don't have to work as hard as you would if you didn't have that electric boost. Really, you get all the fun of riding a bike without a lot of the work, yeah. Dep depending on how much you dial up that pedal right. assist. So we've had a great time riding around on these hills all throughout Barber. Third place, Tom McGlenn. Second place, George Kavakis. And your winner, Doc Lundy. Congratulations. Something I particularly love about this motorsports park is that you can go just about anywhere. I mean, once you, you have to sign a waiver when you come in here 
you get your armband, and you can just wander around the park. Through the paddock area where the racing teams are preparing their vehicles, where they're working on them. So that's really cool because you can get really up close and personal with these cars. You can ask the drivers questions. You can ask the mechanics questions. Now, of course, you don't want to interrupt when they're in the middle of a race, but during their prep time, they're out there and usually pretty excited when people ask questions about their vehicles. The other cool thing about this park, I think, are just the trees and the shade and that it really is a park setting. You can uh, basically lay out a picnic blanket and sit under the trees and that's really nice. You can always find a shade tree to sit beneath mm -hmm. and watch the race. In fact, there is no stadium or you know set seating at this park. No all, grandstands. No grandstands. So all the seating is just you bringing a folding chair or you bringing a blanket and setting out, you know, on the hillside and finding your favorite spots. So I think that's pretty cool and unique as well. Some of you may know that uh, I have long been a motorsport enthusiast. I'm always the slowest driver out there on the track, but I do <laughs> occasionally like to get out and run around a racetrack. It's an incredibly beautiful, roughly two and a half mile long course with over 80 feet of elevation change. Mm -hmm. So there are a lot of rolling hills. So we're about to drive on what is called a parade lap and just a little fun run around the track at Barber. Uh, many years ago, I wrote a little book called The Lost Spider that was actually partially set here in this area at Barber Motorsports Park. It is a work of fiction. So sometimes we get together with our local club. One of the great things about being a member of a club here is you can drive the track. We do have dedicated driver's education events, but you can also, during these type of events, do parade laps and you just drive the track with all sorts of different cars from every different make and model. And there is a pace car, you can't pass anybody, so it's a follow lead situation. And you get to drive that whole racetrack and just see what it feels like to be a driver driving this track. And it's really a lot of fun. I mean, you see everything from sports cars to minivans to Jeeps to pickup trucks and everything in between. Yeah, something about Barber, it just seems like you can do so much more at this track than at most other motorsports yeah. tracks that I've seen. I mean, you can get up close to the drivers and the cars. They're all around you. It's very much geared towards the spectator. Yeah. They really want the spectator to have a great experience. So I think that's really cool. There's also the Barber Motorsports Museum. It is the largest motorcycle museum in the world. They have roughly 900 motorcycles on display there. It holds the Guinness World Record currently for the largest motorcycle collection. It is truly a top-notch experience there. If you've never been, I highly recommend you tour it. Even if you know nothing about motorcycles and you don't care, you'll just be impressed at the collection and the level of detail that they take in caring for and preserving these historic motorcycles. My name is Greg Balker. I'm from Tuscarora, Maryland. This is my third trip to the Barber Motorsports Park. I consider it the best motorcycle museum in the world, period. Yeah, this has become one of the top tourist destinations in our state, and certainly people come here from all over the world. So that's it, guys. A look at our little shakedown cruise, which left us badly shaken. <laughs> yes, apparently we were finally struck by lightning. Hopefully, the damage is limited to our surge protector. We will know more soon. What do they say? Lightning usually doesn't strike twice. So maybe this got us, you know, our lightning strike. It's behind us. We will never deal with it again. I hope Fingers so. Fingers crossed. <laughs> Shakedown cruises, you should do one, especially if you're about to embark on a really long cross country RV trip, which yeah. we will be doing soon because yes, long, long honeymoon will be back on the road in the very near future. If you guys enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends and family. If you haven't yet, click that subscribe button down below, click the bell icon to be notified of future videos. And if you haven't, subscribe to our newsletter. We send a newsletter out every Monday-ish. It has some good information in there. A lot of extras, I think, the behind the scenes that I try to share with you guys every now and then, like things coming up in our lives. and Insider scoop. Some insider scoop. Fun information. So you can find the link to sign up below this video, or you can go to our website, longlonghoneymoon.com, and there's a link there where you can join the newsletter. Hope to see you there.
All right, until next time. What do we say? Lolo. Lolo. So here's the story. We hitched up our rig just to tow it over to Barbara Mo's motor. That, that, that. How many beers have you had? I haven't even had one beer. <laughs> just easy. It's a bit of a tongue twister. <laughs> Correct. So we want to pester George Barber, the owner of Barber's Motorsports Park, to put in an RV dump station because then it'll, it'll be perfect. Yeah. Hey guys, quick announcement. A lot of you fiberglass RV owners have asked about getting ceramic nano shield coatings on your RVs. I'm happy to report that this is now available. So if you want to have your fiberglass RV protected, by the industry's best ceramic glass coating. Talk to Vinny or Brian, book an appointment, and yes, you can tell them I sent you.